Good evening. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the celebration of the Sacrament of Confirmation for St. Ignatius Parish. At this time, I ask everyone here to please silence all cell phones and electronic devices. This evening's liturgy will also be live streamed by our parish YouTube channel. So if you have guests that were not able to come in person, you're welcome to share with them that information and hopefully they'll be able to log in and view and participate live online as well. Our liturgy this evening is a celebration of the accomplishments of the young people over the last several months. And it's broken into three parts. We have the beginning of Mass that has the Liturgy of the Word, followed by the Rite of Confirmation, and then we will have the Liturgy of the Eucharist and the celebration of Holy Communion. In the Rite of Confirmation, we have three outward signs that our church does to show us the hidden, invisible blessing of God and the pouring of the Holy Spirit. The first part of the Rite of Confirmation is the renewal of baptismal promises on the part of the candidates, that they will stand and they will profess their faith, that their parents and godparents made on their behalf so many years ago on the day of their baptism. In a way, they will be confirming their faith and claiming it for themselves. The second part of the rite is the laying on of hands. And through the ancient gesture of the imposition of hands, Bishop Parker will call down the Holy Spirit to confirm his gifts on these young people to be confirmed. And the third part of the rite of confirmation is the anointing with sacred chrism, where the sponsor will come forward with the candidates present them to the bishop by their confirmation name, and they will be anointed on the head with the sacred chrism to be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Following the rites of confirmation, we will have the Eucharistic liturgy and Holy Communion. For Holy Communion this evening, we ask that those in the center two sections please come forward to receive communion using the side aisles and then return to their pews via the center aisle. Once the center two sections have come forward and received Holy Communion, then the side aisles are then, or side sections are then invited to come forward and receive communion, and then return to their pews via the far side aisles by the confessionals. We ask that everybody please keep their face masks on, properly covering their face and their nose throughout the entire liturgy while in the church this evening. At the conclusion of our liturgy, we ask that we exit the building quietly while also maintaining social distancing, starting with the back rows and moving forward to the front of the church. Tonight is a wonderful celebration of the faith of these young people and the family gathered here together in God's church. So with that, let us pause. Let us recognize God's holy presence among us and let us stand and begin our liturgy.
everyone and welcome. In the name of the parish, I warmly welcome our candidates, our sponsors, and our families to our confirmation liturgy here this evening. In a special way, I welcome our auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese of Baltimore, Bishop Adam Parker. Bishop, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Good evening. Good evening, and thank you, Monsignor, for the warm welcome today. It is a real pleasure to be here to celebrate this sacrament with you. A special congratulations to our young people who will be confirmed this evening. You know, celebrating the gifts of the Holy Spirit in a sacramental way is my very favorite thing to do as a bishop, so I'm thrilled to be here with you today. As we begin this celebration, we are mindful that each one of us is called to be a disciple. And sometimes we fail to live out that call as we should. And so we begin this celebration by asking our God for pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit coming near and dwelling graciously within us may make of us a perfect temple of his glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, for I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to clean, 
cleanse you from all of your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking your bodies, your stony hearts, and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you are also called to the one hope of your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Jesus unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Will our candidates for confirmation please stand? Bishop Parker, I am very happy to testify that our candidates for the Sacrament of Confirmation here have completed our formation program in preparation for this sacrament, and I'm pleased to present them to you. Why don't we congratulate them? Thank you, Monsignor, and candidates, you may be seated. When I think about the days in my life that I looked forward to absolutely the most, you know those days when you count down the number of days to go? Days like graduating from high school, my 21st birthday, getting ordained a priest, getting the COVID vaccine. (laughs) There is one day that I looked forward to, I think, more than any of these other days in my life, and that was the day that I got my driver's license. Why? Because I knew that that driver's license would change my life totally and forever. I knew that that moment would mark that point in my life where it would look completely different after I had my driver's license from how it had been before. And you know what? It was true. Even to this day, my life looks completely different having that driver's license than it did before. Now, I bring that up this evening because candidates for confirmation, you have arrived at a moment that is going to change your life totally and completely and forever. You've arrived at a moment this evening where you're going to be a different person when you leave the church tonight than when you walked in the door. Why? Because you are going to be marked with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And tonight you are giving three incredibly important yeses. What is it that you're saying yes to that's going to change your life so totally and completely? You're saying yes to belonging to the Catholic Church. You're saying yes to being a disciple of Jesus Christ. And you're saying yes to making disciples. When I think about that yes to the Catholic Church and why belonging to the church matters and what difference it makes to your own life, the Catholic Church connects us to God. It brings us to God. The church is our connection to Jesus Christ. Now, many people may say that they can have that connection to Jesus 
without the church. They don't need the church for that connection. Those are the people, they're the people who, who want a general without an army. They want a king without a kingdom. They want a shepherd, but no sheep. They want the faith, but not the faithful. A lot of times these people will describe themselves as spiritual, but not religious. You've all heard that, right? I'm spiritual, but not religious. Every time I hear someone describe themselves that way, I like to ask them the question, okay, well, what's the center of your spirituality? And oftentimes I get answers like, well, I try to be a good person. I try to show compassion to others. I try to make the world a better place. I try to help other people. Not bad things, but what those primarily have in common is the I. They become the center of their spirituality, not our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And even if they are faithful to Jesus Christ, what you often find is that they want the Lord, but they want my Lord, not our Lord. That's not what we believe as Catholics. As Catholics, we believe that the church and Jesus Christ are one. The church he founded and Jesus are one. They are inseparable. We say that every week in the creed. When we pray, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Now, in addition to bringing us to God, the Catholic church is also meant to bring us together as believers. And together as believers as a church, the church does some pretty incredible things. Think about it. We educate people, people of all faiths in our Catholic schools, in the high schools that many of you go to, and in universities like Loyola and Mount St. Mary's and Notre Dame. We feed the hungry at places like our daily bread, and my sister's place. We shelter the homeless at Christopher's place and Sarah's house. We heal the sick at hospitals like Mercy and Good Samaritan and St. Joseph's and St. Agnes. We assist immigrants at places like the Esperanza Center. And we form young people in our faith, like right here, in your very own confirmation preparation program. You get the picture? These are just some of the reasons why I love being Catholic, why I'm proud to be a member of the Catholic Church. And that's just right here in the Baltimore metro area. You multiply that by every state, every country throughout the world, and together as a church, we do incredible things when we come together as believers in the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Without the church, none of these things would happen. Imagine that world. Now, in addition to connecting us to God and bringing us together as believers, the church also has a significant impact in our own individual personal spiritual lives because it's in the context of the church that we hear the voice of God, not just in the church building, but in the context of the church, in the Bible, in the scriptures, which the church gives us, we hear the voice of God. We hear the voice of God in the homilies you hear at Mass from Monsignor Barker and from Father Steve and from Deacon Scott and the other deacons and priests who help out here, from Father Mark. We hear the voice of God in, in the teachings of our church, even those teachings that we may find difficult to understand or accept at times. We hear God's voice in those teachings. And we hear the voice of God, especially in our own prayer, wherever we may be. My friends, belonging to the church, getting confirmed, means that we are committing to being disciples of Jesus Christ. And what does that mean? What does it mean to be a disciple? It means primarily 
that we have a relationship with Him. That we know Him. That we pray to Him. That we come to worship and adore Him. Before we actually do anything, we are. We are His disciples in virtue of the sacrament of baptism when that water was poured over our heads. And in virtue of this sacrament of confirmation you're receiving this evening, we are His disciples. And these sacraments empower us to be His disciples. And so what does that mean we do? What are disciples of Jesus Christ called to do? The answer is pretty simple. We are called to make disciples. Think about it. Every person sitting here, and those of us joining, those joining on live stream, every one of us is here because someone else over the last 2,000 years accepted this commitment to making disciples, to telling other people about Jesus Christ. If they hadn't done that, we ourselves would never have heard about the Lord. And when you think about those who are going to come after us, those in the future, maybe even your own children someday, they will only come to know about Jesus Christ because somebody else tells them about him. That's how we make disciples and grow our church. So practically speaking, how do we do this? How do we actually make disciples? In my letters to you, I asked you to reflect in your letters to me about some practical ways to share our faith. And some of you got pretty creative about how to do that. You know, in order to get here tonight, I know that you did service projects. And some of those weren't easy, especially in this time of pandemic. So I want to challenge you to continue throughout your life to do some form of active service. But also do this. When you're going out to serve others, invite someone to come along to serve with you. Someone who maybe isn't so much practicing their faith anymore, or maybe it's even somebody who's not engaged in the life of Christianity at all. Invite them with you. And as you're serving, help them to understand that serving others is not good just for the people who are being served. It's good for the ones doing the serving. And then go deeper. Help them to understand that we serve others because Jesus asked us to do so. And after you've been serving along that, alongside that person for a while, go deeper and invite them to come here to Mass with you, to hear the Word of God in sacred Scripture, to receive our Lord from the altar in the sacrament of His body and blood. My friends, making disciples begins with our own relationship with Jesus Christ, and it begins with sharing that relationship with those whom we know. Often they're members of our own family, maybe who aren't coming to church so much anymore. And that's the other thing we have to do as disciples. If we're going to be disciples, we've got to be nourished by his body and blood from this altar, which means we've got to show up for the Mass. Those of you who are athletes, you know that before a big competition, you've got to be fueled up with the right kind of food. Really the same, it's, it's true for all of us on any given day. We've got to be nourished by food to get through the day, to do what we need to do, or get through that competition. The same is true in our life of discipleship. We need the nourishment of our Lord's body and blood for our life of discipleship. My friends who are being confirmed this evening, I'm so excited for you. Because to the extent that you say yes to belonging to the church, to being a disciple, and to making disciples, your life changes totally and completely and forever. What could be better than that? What could be more powerful than a life of discipleship in Jesus Christ and making disciples?
So if you're ready to make that commitment, the first thing we're going to do is renew your baptismal promises, reminding you of that sacrament made it and that commitment made for you so long ago. So if you're ready to say yes, then please stand now and renew those baptismal promises along with me. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of our church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
My friends, let us congratulate those who have just been confirmed. <laughs> All grace flows from our triune God. Let us unite in prayer as the disciples first did in the presence of the Holy Spirit, making our response, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may continue to devote ourselves to the teaching of the apostles, to the breaking of the bread, and to meeting the needs of the community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop Lurie, Bishop Parker, Monsignor Jim, all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may promote unity in the church and that those who serve in your name may be guided by the Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the community gathered here, especially our newly confirmed youth, may we develop more fully in our response to all the gifts which the Spirit bestows for the service of the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, the diaconate, and religious life, that men and women will hear and answer the call of God to serve his church. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and suffering in mind, body, or spirit, that they may experience the healing compassion of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially the family and loved ones of this community, that they too may experience the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit upon us all, that we may constantly do your will. We ask you to hear and answer these prayers which we make through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the all of his holy church. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that, being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him, as they share in the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, Adam, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share with each other a sign of peace. Peace, please. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity foster her growth in the world. Through Christ our Lord. My friends, so many folks helped make tonight's celebration so very meaningful. First, to our newly confirmed, your enthusiasm, your participation in our confirmation program, it's a wonderful, hope-filled sign for our church. Thank you all for what you bring to our community. Why don't we again congratulate our confirmandes. To our confirmation parents, sponsors, our catechists, our servant leadership, Ken Gedeke, our youth minister, our faith formation staff, thank you for the love, the effort that you have given to our confirmandi and our program over this past year. To Rob Barbarino, our director of music, all invite all involved in tonight's liturgy, thank you for adding so much uh, to tonight's celebration. And again, Bishop Parker, thank you for honoring us with your presence tonight as our confirming bishop, and thank you for all you do as a shepherd in our diocese. Why don't we thank the bishop? As you've had the opportunity, Monsignor, to thank so many people, I want to say thanks to you on behalf of Archbishop Lori the leadership of the Archdiocese, and I'm sure I speak for your parishioners as well, in thanking you for being a shepherd for this local community and for your ministry. You know, when I was a seminarian, Father Jim was the vocation director, and the entire time I was going through the formation for priesthood, from the moment I was accepted by the Archdiocese until I was ordained a priest, Father Jim was my vocation director, and he shepherded me every single day throughout those many, many years And I always love to take the opportunity to say thank you publicly for what you have done for me personally, and thank you for your friendship. Why don't we say thanks to him? And lastly, speaking of counting days, it's 39 days until Deacon Scott gets ordained a priest. How about that? I know I'm counting. Please stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.